It seems to me that lately, lately, you guys cannot get enough of Michael Creaso messaging me. At least, oh gosh darn it, two people messaged me and asked for this comparison in particular. Michael Creaso, guys, he is a serious threat. Can he take out Ian Valier? Ian Valier, guys, here at the Vancouver Pro. No, he's not everybody's cup of tea. He doesn't have those three-dimensional, round, uh, full-bellied muscles. But he has a thin skin condition that, let's just say if you're a bodybuilder, you do not want to stand next to this guy. He has skin so thin it's like glaciers. Just like glass. I know you watch my channel, Ian. I know you love it. You fucking love it. Let's go through these shots. Front double bicep pose. Ian has improved in this shot. His arms in particular. Look at the bicep swoops. The peaks, if you will. Michael Creaso looks like a work of art. Look at this, guys. It's a little bit tilted, thousely, is the shot of Ian. Hmm. Interesting. The lighting at the Vancouver Pro, it's not casting any shadows. It's like the, the lights were right on the lags. So you can't really see the true separation. And you can see that in Creasos. But take a close look, guys. Take a real close look. And a lot of people say, oh, you can't judge with pictures. But you can, you know, you can make an educated decision on this. Ian Valier, he does have that just thin skin, just like glass, just like glass. But Creaso, on a whole, I just like him on the on the front double buy. Go through the, oh, go through these shots. Look, come on, do your pose. I make you nervous, come on. Jeez, Arnold, take it easy, take it easy. I just showed this picture, it's blurry, you can't even really see. No, you can't tell from pictures like this. But here's a better one of Creaso, and you can see. I uh, I don't think he's that bad at all. I think he's pretty conditioned indeed. Now, is he to the level of an Ian Valier? Ian. Ian. Well, probably not. Probably not. And I actually prefer Ian much better in this shot. So I guess it's one for one. Close. Turn to the side. Now, if you don't understand bodybuilding and you're not into the thin skin thing or the condition thing, you really don't understand this pose how I'm giving it to Ian. Because Michael Creaso, you look at the arm... You look at the full round packs. Ian's pack's not bad. And it's an easy victory, right? Well, no, no, no. Look at the glutes. Look at the hamstrings. Look at those quads. You can see right through that skin. The judges would just have one look at this and say, Oh, well, Ian's winning the match. He's winning the match. Side tricep, same thing, guys. Same bloody bleeming, blooming thing here. Yeah. And like I said, between the match I had with Ian Valier and Hunter Labrada from the Olympia, there's no way that Hunter Labrada is going to take this Ian. Now, if, if Hunter improves, which I'm sure he will, it's going to be a different story. But there's no way, guys. This Ian Valier, look at this. He's not, like I said, everybody's cup of tea. He doesn't have the big giant tricep, which Creaso does. Fantastic. But it's a game of conditioning. Turn around. Here's where Creaso may be able to creep up on an Ian Valier with the back. Pretty good conditioned here is Creaso. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. And he will be improving on the, on the condition. I am sure. I am sure. This picture here is from a different event. But it's similar condition from the other event. Just a better shot altogether. His back seems to be thicker. But make no mistake about it, guys. Striations in the glutes, Ian. Not known for it, but he is known for that glass skin, thin skin. And he has improved this back. He has, definitely. 110%. Go to the rear double. And this is a situation, guys. See, this event here is a little bit of a different event from the rear lat spread that I showed for Michael Creaso. His back was thicker. I think he's more conditioned here, though. Is he as conditioned as Ian Valier? Hmm, probably not. Probably not. It's all about levels. This condition of Ian at the Vancouver, I'm telling you, it's like he looked in 2020 at the Olympia, and he was beating a guy like Hunter Labrada then. He's going to be a handful. Now, the absent thigh is a different situation altogether. 
Creezo, Creezo, let my people win. And guys, yeah, I've I've thought Ian was very impressive lately. Go now, you see that? You go to the most muscular, and now he has abs. Now he brings the abs. You, you see that? Isn't that funny? Why don't you flex your abs in the abs and thigh, Ian? But anyway, anyway, Ian Valier, much more conditioned than this Michael Creezo. And Creezo, I think, had a guy like Hunter Labrada's number. And, and Ian, this version, has Hunter's number at the Olympia last year. But make no mistake about it, Ian just competed. We get to use his latest improved versions. We have yet to see the new Creezo. We have yet to see the new 2022 Hunter. So, I guess it's a little unfair at the end of the day. But definitely, guys. Definitely. Ian Valier. He is winning the bodybuilding show between the two. And it is due to condition. Had uh, he been a little softer and Creezo a little bit more on, they were even in condition, then Creezo wins for sure. He's a better, uh, he has better shape, more aesthetic. But come on, guys. That's Ian's game. Beat him at it. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. You're not gonna. Anyway, guys, hit thumbs up on the video. I have high hopes for both of these guys. And the, uh, you know, the IFBB. A lot of young guys coming up. And it's a whole new look. Subscribe to the channel. Have a great one.